you know, last night I come home and there was what appeared to be a dead body in the middle of the street. I came home to my house last night. There was a lifeless body in the middle of the road, not moving, couldn't see that they were breathing. There was this woman. She was totally unconscious. She was out of it. She was unresponsive. She was barely breathing. She didn't respond to noise. She didn't respond to light. She didn't respond to anything. Of course, we called for some help. Began to help assist with the breathing. Trying to save this person's life. Trying to prevent this person from dying in front of my house. Who are they? I don't know. Where'd you come from? I don't know. It was a very bizarre thing. It turns out she was dying from an overdose. Dying from an overdose in front of my house. Just a little bit of that holiday spirit. Just a little bit of fun. Just a little bit of party. Come on, it's New Year's. Have a drink. Come on, one little hit won't hurt anything. One little pill is not going to destroy you, will it? The spirit of drunkenness. This is a serious epidemic in America. And it's a very big problem in Christianity. There are a lot of Christians that are worthless in God's eyes because they say, oh, a little bit of this is okay. Just a little bit of fun is all right. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Is not wise. It's just a little bit of wine, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It is not wise. Don't believe that lie that one drink won't hurt. Don't believe the lie that, well, one little joint won't hurt you. One little pill's not that bad. Come on, man. Everybody does it. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. Drunkenness is foolishness. You're poisoning your health. You're destroying your body and your mind. And the devil wants to get everybody he can. He wants to destroy lives. It is not wise. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath battling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Christian, what are you commanded to do? Look not thou upon the wine. You hear? Look not upon. Don't even look at it. Don't be party with it. Don't hang out with people that are taking part of it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. There's a blessing for not going along with the drunks. For not hanging out with people that are losing their sobriety. That say a little bit of drugs is okay. Don't you know everybody? It's legal now. Who cares? No, I care. God cares. Jesus cares. And if you want to be a worthless Christian, then go on with them and let the devil kill and steal and destroy your life. We, on the other hand, need to warn we need to watch and warn and pray and tell others and warn this next generation. Don't take part. Don't play along with it. You're playing with fire. I know Christians that have done things, said things, hurt family members, and they regret it for the rest of their lives for the actions they did in one night. Well, it's just one drink. It's just one pill. It's just one, one joint. Whatever it is, you're not sober. You're not in control. You're letting the devil come in and wreck havoc. Just totally wreck havoc. We need to warn the next generation. There's a bunch of Christians. There's an epidemic in Christianity. It's okay to get a little drunk. It's just a little bit of wine for my heart, right? Hey, vinegar does the same thing. Get you some apple cider vinegar, all right? That'll keep you sober. Whoa, that'll wake you up, right? <laughs> Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Verse 32. At the last... It biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. You know, most sane, sober-minded individuals wouldn't play with a serpent. Oh, it's a rattlesnake. Let's pick it up and bring it in the house. Maybe the kids can play with it. I think not. Most sane and sober-minded individuals would avoid a rattlesnake, right, or a moccasin. But what, what do you do when you get a little drunk? What's the world? Oh, come on. Just have a little. Just have one drink. Those that play with fire, that play with poison, they want to mock you for being sober-minded. And they themselves are playing with death for drunkenness. Well, it's just going to shut down some of the systems in my body. But when it hits a certain point that my body, when the alarms are going off and they're saying, ah, 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 you're dying, ooh, then I get a little tipsy. 
You understand that wine will kill you. It is a poison to your body. Alcohol is a poison. Pills are a poison. For a Christian to be successful, you have to be sober. You have to be clear-minded. You have to get control and stop letting somebody else drive. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. They're playing with death for drunkenness. How many Christians have just swore off drinking? Well, I never, I'll never touch it again after what I've seen and what I've done. And oh man, I have so many regrets. I'll never touch it again. Why, you got some? How many Christians have swore off drinking? Well, it's the holidays. Yeah. They come crawling back to their own vomit. They come crawling back to waller in their sin. Don't let the devil ruin the end of your year. Don't let the devil ruin your next year. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Watch and be sober. Look out. Be circumspect. Care about those around you. We need to be awake. We need to make sure we know what's going on. We need to be in control of our own body. We need to possess our own vessel in sanctification in the fear of the Lord, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit instead of being drunk with wine. Protect your sober mind. Guard your heart. Guard your mind. Don't let anything influence you. Listen, as Christians, we should not be drunk. We should be clear-minded. We should be sober. We should be drug-free. And there is an epidemic in America of this destructive drugging and drinking, and it's destroying Christian lives. It's making Christians unfruitful and unprofitable for God because they're filled with wine rather than God's Holy Spirit. He says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. Be ye sober, the Bible is saying. Don't be drunk. Don't be on drugs. The devil wants you to try some drugs. Try just one little old drink. Try, try you know, lose your sobriety. Get in the spirit of the holidays. Come on, it's the holidays. Just have a little. Have some fun. No, that's how the devil wants to destroy Christians. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The devil wants to steal your blessing. He wants to kill your body. He wants to destroy your family. That's his goal. And with a little bit of drunkenness, a little bit of drugs, he can accomplish that. Let's glorify God this next year. Let's glorify God in 2020. No drinking. Drug free in 2020. And if I'm around somebody, I don't care who they are. I need to open my mouth and say, that is stupid. You're destroying yourself. You're hurting yourself. Don't play with fire. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. Be vigilant. The devil wants to get in your house and destroy your family. It if you just take one little hit, one little drink, one little pill, you let your sobriety go, and who's being the watchman over your house? Who's in control of your body? You wake up hurt and abused and bleeding, hey, get what you deserve. You let somebody else drive your car. When you get it back, if there's a scratch on the door, well, guess what? That's what happens, right? But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. God wants you to be clear minded. God wants you to be sober and alert and awake and aware of your surroundings.